Hi, today we're going to talk about macros. Uh, you may have heard the word macro and you may not know what that means. Um, and it probably sounds a little intimidating, like, uh, like a computer code you might have to know in order to do something. It is a computer code, but CorelDRAW makes it very easy to, to uh, record your own macros without knowing how to program the macro. So what is a macro? A macro is simply a string of code that tells the program what to do with a specific object. So let's, uh, let's uh, learn how to record and how to perform a macro. And so you can see how you might use it in your everyday work to make your life a lot easier. As you can see down here at the bottom, I've created a five-page document. The pages are all blank now. And the way to create a page, if you don't know, is right-click on the page and insert it. Or if you're on the last page, you just hit Page Down, and it will make you a new page. So we got six pages now. And uh, let's say this is a kid's book, and it's supposed to look fun. And we want page numbers on it, but just not just any plain page numbers. We want to make them kind of fancy. And we're going to have to do that on every page. So we've got five pages here, actually six. And uh, imagine this was 100 pages. You had to do this 100 times. Let's write a macro now. I'm going to ungroup these. Or not, excuse me, I'm going to break artistic text apart, which gives me the individual numbers. And page 1 will be page 22 in our book. Let's write a macro. I've got this uh, selected here. Tools right here. Visual Basic. Now, this is an old version of CorelDRAW. If you have a newer one, this might be called Macro Manager. Either way, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to open up this flyout. And right here, Record. It's going to record a macro. What are we going to call it? Anything we want numbers and then we'll put it right here global macros I don't know if that's the correct place but that's what I do and then um, okay so now it's recording so everything I do from this point until I tell it to stop it's gonna remember so first thing I'm gonna do is click my P key that's gonna put my number right in the center of the page I'll tell you why I'm doing all this in a few minutes after we learn how to do it then I'm going to move it up here. This is where I want my page numbers to be. I'm going to enlarge it to whatever I please. I'm going to stretch it a little bit till I like it. Then I'm going to turn it red. And I'm going to copy it. Control C or copy up here on your toolbar. And now I'll give it an outline with my left, excuse me, with my right mouse click on my white color palette right there. So now it has an outline. You can't see it because it's white. Um, but let's make the outline, I don't know, 11 points, round corners, and behind fill. Okay, remember I copied the black, so I'm going to paste it. Control V or paste. And uh, I'll go up here and make that one black. I'm going to drop it behind the first one. Cont uh, shift, page down, puts it in the back. Then I'm going to hold down shift and use my arrow keys to nudge the black into where I want it. And that's how I want my page numbers to look. So now that I'm finished, we'll go back up here. Tools, Visual Basic, or Macro Manager, and we'll click Stop. Now it remembers everything I did starting from a number. Remember, it moves it to the center of the page, and then up here, and then applies the uh, special effects. The reason I move it to the center of the page first is that gives it a starting point, because the macro takes it from here up to here, which requires the macro to record the exact coordinates from here to here in X and Y, horizontal and vertical uh, movement. All right, so let's go to page two and see if our macro works again. Select the 23 tools right here down to Visual Basic, 
play. And remember, we called it numbers. So it's under global macro here. Recorded macros, numbers. Now we'll just run the macro, and there it goes. So what did it do? It 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 did the exact sequence of events that I recorded. Now you might get sick and tired of coming up here all the time. So, uh, like I said, this is an older version of CorelDRAW, so there might be a shortcut for this now. But I'm under Options and uh, Commands here. File. We'll go to Macros. You can find all this yourself. Uh, recorded macros, numbers. I'm going to assign a. I'm going to assign a shortcut key, and I'll just pick something that I'm not using for something else. Control and then five on my number pad. Assign. Okay. Now there's a shortcut key. So on each page, I just click the number. Control five, and there it goes. Page down changes my page. Control five, and one more time. Control five, and it runs the macro. So you can see I didn't program anything. I just did something, and it recorded it. And now we have the numbers on each page. I'm just clicking page up to get through the pages. Page down, 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 down. Okay, that's a macro. And uh, you could probably come up with a thousand different uh, uses for a macro. And now that you know how easy it is to record one and to create a keyboard shortcut for it, you might find yourself doing this on a lot of different projects. Anyway, experiment with these. There's a lot to learn. I'm the first one to admit I don't understand everything about it. But now you know what a macro is and how to make one. And I hope your next project goes well.